there, REM PCs. Welcome to Rules of Cool, where we interview very special guests, creators, gamers, designers, and world builders. I'm your host, REM, and today we're talking with FASA co-founder Ross Babcock and Todd Bogenreef, the FASA developer for their new supplement for the space fighter game Aetherstream Interceptor, now on Kickstarter. This week's giveaway is a free copy of the Interceptor core box set. That's right, get a game and minis for typing hashtag RemPC in the chat, and you'll get your free entry to win, and you can get bonus entries by donating bits and subs. Every 100 bits gets you a bonus entry to win, and subscribing gets you seven whole bonus entries. We also invite you to join us on Discord. The Rem Alternus server is an inclusive and supportive community of gamers. Our favorite channels include Pun, Joke, and Meme, Goose Goose Duck Saturday Gaming, support and encouragement for when you just need a little extra kindness, and we hold casting calls to join our streams on the Master of Rem Twitch channel, a learn to play D&D program, a monthly trivia night, and more. So please check it out at the link in the chat and welcome to the community. Subversion, the new cyberpunk fantasy TTRPG by Fragging Unicorns Games is coming soon to Kickstarter. Build your community and subvert authority. Oh, I'm gonna start that one over. Build your community and subvert authority at every turn in this gritty Neo Babylon setting. Follow the project now before it goes live at the link in the chat. Now, time to get right into our conversation for this week. So stay tuned, REM PCs. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you for joining us. And thank you for joining us to Todd and Ross. Welcome to the show. Great to be here. Thank you. I am so excited to talk to you both today about all things FASA and uh, Aetherstream. And uh, just so you guys know as well, um, Todd might have some uh, connectivity issues. So camera might come on and off so that uh, that he can maximize that internet connection. Uh, but he is here with us, so that's the important part. Uh, now, my favorite question to ask to kick everything off, and I'll, I'll take turns with each of you, is what is your history as a gamer? How did you get started? Ross, can we start with you? <laughs> um, knowing this question was coming, uh, back in the seventh or eighth grade, a friend and I wanted to replay World War II, and we were going to create our own game. And then we discovered Avalon Hills, France, 1940. And that was our, uh, the first war game, adventure game that I played. And uh, started with uh, SBI games, uh, that sort of thing. D&D &D mm -hmm. exploded on when I was in uh, at Kings Point in college. And uh, in my senior year, that's when I met Jordan Weissman. And, you know, the rest, they say, is history from that point on. Fair enough. I love it. Um, I love the, that, that history of wargaming and then seeing where, um, where some of the fastest projects are now. You can see that love. Um, so that's super cool. Todd, how about you? Oh, mine's not quite as exciting as all that. Um, <laughs> probably probably about the same age seven or no probably a little probably seven or eight years old um friend of mine's sister came back from one of the the early gen cons and uh with this new game dungeons and dragons <laughs> and awesome. that uh and from there it was that that was uh pretty much it for me every i was all about games ever since then so any game i could get my hands on i would read go up to the the local comic book store at the time which sold a few games and buy everything that came out and yeah that, that's pretty much it 
you're still ahead of me. I didn't get into it until after uh, college. I told myself that I, I was a dork, not a nerd. And the two things that I would never do is play Dungeons and Dragons and watch Star Trek. And I am a giant hypocrite. So <laughs> here we are. <laughs> so Todd, how did you get involved with FASA? Um, well, I was uh, brought on board with um, Red Brick by uh, a, a gentleman named Jane Sutton. And um, he um, needed somebody to write Fading Suns really fast because they wanted to get it ready for Gen Con. So um, I, I jumped in on the opportunity and, and did the work. And um, shortly thereafter, I guess uh, James talked to Ross and, and FASA Games was uh, reborn. And uh, I just kind of lucked into the position and, and floated over. <laughs> That's awesome. And, and that kind of segues perfectly for, for Ross um as as co-founder back in what you said 1980 correct what is this this story of the birth and rebirth of fasa so obviously we uh company was started uh late 1980 early 81 um by 2001 um all of the vwe and microsoft stuff had happened so that jordan was living in Seattle, working for Microsoft. Uh, Mort and I were in Chicago, uh, continuing on with FASA. Um, we, several things came into play and essentially we decided to uh, stop operations of FASA uh, at that time. Um, you know when you end a company uh it doesn't stop on you know on on the last day there's all kinds of business stuff that carries on and i was the shepherd for that uh that included um certain things that whiz kids uh jordan's new company didn't want to be bothered with one of those was earth dawn and i continued to license earth dawn to uh, Living Room Games and then Red Brick, as Todd mentioned. James Sutton at Red Brick had big plans and wanted to do lots of things and uh, various conversations between him and I in 2011, 2012 said, well, why don't we just reactivate the FASA name and publish our games under that banner? And that decision was made in 2012. That's awesome. Uh, so uh unfortunately shortly thereafter james had to leave the company and i've been holding the bag ever since <laughs> i like the, the the phraseology of holding the bag uh i feel like it's a giant dice bag and more and more just gets added to it <laughs> well it, it could be a giant bag of holding it uh you know you never know what you'll find in there <laughs> Fair enough. It's 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 neat because we had um we had Josh on the show uh to talk about Earth Dawn and FASA um and kind of like told the story a little bit. So now getting to put the face to behind what happened and and stuff like that is really neat to see it kind of come full circle and and get the details. So thank you. Uh, so before we get into the featured topic of Aetherstream uh and the Interceptor. Uh, series. Tell us about the other games that you've worked on for FASA. Um, and Todd, you mentioned to me like Fading Suns Revised and Noble Armada Third Edition. Uh, walk us through, walk us through your your designer history here. Uh, yep. So, um, yeah, I started um, like I said with uh, James bring me on to do the Fading Suns Revised for for Red Brick. So um, I worked on that. Um, and then that that led into um, Noble Armada Third Edition, since that's all in the same setting. So you know, and I, I've always, uh, you know, being a, a Star Wars guy and everything, I always like spaceships and all that. So it was a, a natural fit. And then um, you know, that's pretty much all I've worked on so far. Um, you know, I've, I've tried to to sneak my way into Earth on, but they won't let me. <laughs> you you forget to mention, Todd, that you ever since you and I met, you were agitating to bring back a certain game line, if at all possible. That is true. Oh? 
Yeah, um, you know, uh, one of my favorite uh, games from the early FASA games days was uh, uh, Renegade Legion Interceptor. Um, so, and it's space fighter combat action. So, awesome. um, definitely uh, wanted to do that. And I kept bothering Ross, when are we going to get the license back? And, well, we, we didn't, but we, we got Interceptor. <laughs> Awesome, and that's kind of what led leads to uh, to to our conversation, our featured conversation for today. Uh, so, Aetherstream Interceptor is is on the cover of the Kickstarter and uh, the boxes that I've seen and stuff like that. So, what is Aetherstream versus what is Interceptor? So, Aetherstream is basically our our the name for our setting. So, everything is in the Aetherstream setting. So. We, you know, we, we um, didn't get the license for, for Renegade Legion. It was tied up. So we decided to, to, we'll create our own setting, but we still wanted a space fighter combat game. And, and we wanted to build a new setting that we could have other games in as well. So, so Interstream really just covers the entire setting and, and background and history and, and backdrop of, of what all this, uh, all this action takes place in. And, um, you know, there, there may be some nods to um, earlier properties and, and some other FASA properties in there, a couple little Easter eggs for people to find. Cool. Awesome. Oh, I, I love Easter eggs. Uh, we talked a lot about the, the Earth Dawn overlap with Shadowrun and how there's Easter eggs uh, that still get put into some of the lore, which is super fun. Um, all right. So, so the basic game for Interceptor. Um, since we now know that Etherstream is the world and now Interceptor is the game. Uh, so that launched on Kickstarter last year. So tell us a little bit about that product and what the game system is. Yep. So Interceptor, um, the, the core box is has everything you need to play the game for, for multiple people. Like you don't need just, you know, two people don't need to buy the box, but they're welcome to. Um, but it's, it's space fighter uh, combat action. Uh, we introduced the first two factions of the setting in there, which is the Terran Commonwealth and the Calistonian Empire, um, the, which you'd get um, 10 fighters for each faction, um, pilot cards. And, you know, so the game is basically played on a, on a hex map. So the hex maps are included in the box as well. Um, you put the models on there, you get the cards for your pilots and your fighters, and, and the action goes from there. Um, played with 10-sided dice, and, you know, everything is included. Um, tokens, dice, pilot record cards, fighter record cards, and the miniatures, along with maneuver templates to play the game. So, first of all, I have to say that I love Ross Vanna Whiting, uh, the product here. <laughs> so, uh, I, I'm a big fan. Um, but also, this is the box we're talking about for the giveaway today, right? Correct. So, all of that stuff, an entire game, minis, dice, all of the fixins come in this box, and we're giving one of those away for free, thanks to Ross, Todd, and FASA today. And you can get a free entry to win this by typing hashtag RemPC in the chat. I can do that right now. And uh, you can get bonus entries to win by donating bits or subscribing to the GemCon TV channel. So that's awesome, guys. That's really cool. Thank you. All right. So we know what Interceptor is as the base game now. Um, and, and you would kind of touch a little bit on e Etherstream being the, the, the world of the game. Um, where does some of this lore come from? What what inspired you to write it? And tell us a little bit about what this world is like. Um, the the lore is definitely inspired inspired by you know um, probably a lot of old video games I've played. Um, Renegade Legion, of course. Um, you know we wanted you know squadron versus squadron kind of action, like a, a game that would scale up and play. So you could play with you know two miniatures or you could play with 12 you know on each side if you really wanted to that kind of thing you know it would scale up or down depending on the time you have and you know we wanted a game that could be played in an hour but we were for the setting we really wanted to, to set up something 
that would help inspire players too, not just, you know, or we were just putting, you know, miniatures on the table and we're going to, you know, just roll some dice and be done with it, but something where you could, you know, have a story that you could carry on through the game. So you get, you have your pilots, you know, and you get, maybe you get your favorite pilots and put them in the fighters and go out there and do some missions and come back and, you know, use them again for the next one and kind of build a story of like how this squadron is going through, through missions and, you know, cool. that kind of thing. Neat. So it's not, uh, yeah, I, I like that. It's not just like a, a one and done. You can build this, this whole arc of, of these, these characters and these ships and this, this group. That's really neat. Cool. Um, now the original Kickstarter had a rule book, the basic box, um, what, and, and we kind of talked about the original box as well. Is it still available and how do you get it? Uh, yes, the um, it is available. I, um, everything shipped from the original Kickstarter, as far as I understand it. Ross could correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and it's available to order from our, our uh, store at um, shopfacetgames.com. Cool. And I think I thought as well, can you get it as an add-on if you back the Kickstarter too? Yes, absolutely. Um, and we also had um, two, um, the squadron boxes come out with the original Kickstarter, which adds... 10 more miniatures and more different pilot cards from the ones that are in the original box. So that we have the Terran Commonwealth squadron box and the Calistonian empire squadron box also available as add-ons um, in awesome. the current Kickstarter. Cool. So all the minis, all yep. of the minis. Excellent. I, I, I'm not a, a, a painting fan myself, but uh, from what I gather from all of my minis friends is the more minis, the better, because they will all sit on a shelf for years and years until they eventually get painted, if they ever get painted. <laughs> Excellent. Um, now, so that was all kind of what was included in that original Kickstarter. So now one year later, the Kickstarter is now live um, and still has, what, 29 days? Yes. Right, 29 days. 29 days, and you're already funded. So congratulations, first of all. Thank you. Uh, so for the rest of this Kickstarter, like what is the the Babylonian Union Squadron set and what are the campaign supplements? Because I saw both of those available as rewards. Yep. So the, the Babylonian Union, Squad, Union Squadron set adds uh, 10 new fighter models to the game and introduces the, the next faction, which is the Babylonian Union. Okay. Um, okay. Great. And, and the, the campaign supplement is, is basically um, an add on to, to the, the rules that were in the core rule book. Um, so it really will expand um, your ability to, to create these pilot stories because you're going to have rules to create new pilots, rules to build a squadron, and then rules to put together like a campaign and run the squadron through missions where they can, you know, improve or, you know, if they suffer casualties, they can call for reinforcements and that kind of oh, thing neat. to bolster, you know, during the campaign. So really it'll let you put together a whole uh, story for them, like through a campaign. And then, you know, once they're done, you can reconcile everything and say, okay, time for the next player to play in their campaign with their squadron, you know, so you know, so one... Oh, go ahead. Oh no, that that's just that I was done. <laughs> so so there's a lot of freedom around creating your own campaign and story in this. Are there any resources for existing campaigns that people could run from? Um well I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure that the uh that the campaign supplement will have a uh an example campaign in it so that oh, players cool. can uh see you know the way we intend it to uh to happen um cool. and and ultimately we'll be fleshing out the etherstream universe itself and providing information on all of the different settings all the different worlds where uh fighter skirmishes could actually take place that's awesome yeah i i catch myself because i keep saying uh tell us about the world but it's really tell us about the universe because there's many worlds <laughs> so. absolutely correct Awesome. <laughs> I have to change my vocabulary now. <laughs> it's too, uh, too, too uh, zoomed in. So uh, we talked about the campaign supplement. We talked about what comes in the Babylonian Union Squadron set. Uh, what stretch goals are planned? Um, the first uh, stretch goal we have um, planned is a uh, 
we're calling it the squadron reserve deck um it's going to have like a, a lot of like generic pilots and gunners to help fill out squadrons like during the camp like while, while they're going through uh, missions on a campaign so it's like you know if you don't want to roll up a new gun or it's not really rolling up but if you don't want to build new fighter pilots and say okay we just need three guys you know you could just grab them out of the deck and, and throw them into your squadron until the campaign is done and you can you know decide to make some new pilots and stuff like that or maybe you know reserves aren't you know the the, the elite guys aren't available you might just get some uh rookies so <laughs> Uh, yeah, one thing you have to remember about Interceptor is that um, fighters aren't guaranteed to survive any given skirmish. It's a pretty bloody game, and uh, you know we we structure the rules so that the, we give the pilots their best shot to survive. But that doesn't always happen. And if you lose control of the battlefield, and your fighters, uh, you know, some of your compatriots have been uh, in disabled fighters, they're going to be captured and they will have to be ransomed back or recovered other ways so you're always likely to be short of pilots so the reserve yeah. deck gives you a, a pool to draw from that that i i like the detail of that of, of it's not just the battle and you're done it's the consequences of the battle and what comes after that's really neat oh how cool yep and the next one after that you know if we can you know if we really do great is uh we have the uh interceptor battle mat which the game comes with nice you know very nice uh paper ones but this one is like one of those big rollout mats you know with a nice starfield background and uh 1.5 millimeter foam so you know that's awesome so that 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 that's what i was hoping we would get to on the original one too because i really want that <laughs> <laughs> I, I i love when you have stretch goals where it's like but i want to hit this <laughs> <laughs> I could awesome. drive Ross crazy with stretch goals that I want. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I see this. Uh, so, so Todd, you're the the creative uh, person, and Ross, you're the one that's like, hold it, that can't go in the dice bag. <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody has to look at the bottom line every now and then just to make sure that it's all that it's all still working. Every now and then, I I, I get you. <laughs> um, so. We were talking a little bit uh, before the show went on, and there's more in store for not only Interceptor, but Etherstream. So let, let's talk about Interceptor first. What We finished this Kickstarter and kick its butt. What's next for Interceptor? Next up, um, we definitely want to get those final two squadron boxes done. So the, the squadron set for the uh, Allied Worlds and for the uh, Trade Directorate. So get those done, and then um, we're, we're not sure yet what uh, other you can say books. it. Oh, uh, the next the next major project after Interceptor. Yep. Um, and then after that, um, we're going to introduce the big ships. Um, so we're going to have Leviathan. <gasps> so so then we'll have the big ships and. That'll be a lot of fun. So that's so neat. I love that we get to hear about that here. And and Leviathan, I feel like across multiple uh, gaming worlds and systems and stuff like that, that's like the whispered word where it's like Leviathan's is coming. Um, <laughs> so so tell us uh, what what can we know about that um, other than big ships. Well, we're going to try um, to meet the same basic goal we did with Interceptors, come up with a game that you can play, you know, with some friends in an hour, hour and a half, because, you know, it, it's a fact as uh, some of us gamers get older, free time becomes very precious. <laughs> so, you know, without committing a, an eight hour slot to, to do a game on a Sunday, we would like a game that's fast to play. So somewhere between an hour and two hours. And then, um, you know, nice, large, um, beautiful models to play with and paint for those that really enjoy painting, um, mm -hmm. such as our uh, other designer, Dan. <laughs> cool. And um, yeah, and we're going to try to draw some inspiration from the original um, Leviathan as well and, and add our own twist to it. Awesome. And, and and also to integrate it with Interceptor as much as possible. So so is it sounds like then that one is a separate um, game from Interceptor. So we've got Aetherstream Leviathan then and Aetherstream Interceptor. Correct. Okay. Cool. Cool. I like it. I dig it. Um, 
And then you've got these other two, uh, what do you call them, clans as well? Uh, squadrons. Squadrons. Or, or, or factions. Factions, yeah. Factions, okay. Um, okay. So no there's... clans. <laughs> no, no clans. Sorry, my battle tech brain is uh, is going into <laughs> overdrive here. Um, all right, so, so there's more for Interceptor coming with the squadrons um, and factions. And then for Aether Stream, we've got Leviathans. Um, anything else coming for uh, for this group of 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 world building and game building, universe building? Well, if I could get the moonshot, I would. I, I really want to get an RPG in the setting as well. Um, yes, please. But but that's probably a little bit off because we got Leviathan to get through, you know, and, and and develop and make sure that's a great game and get that kickstarted first. So fair. Cool. And then, oh, we also have a we have a few other ideas that we're we're kicking around. I'm not sure we're ready to announce those yet, though. Sure, that's fair. You got to keep some secrets for the next time yeah. you're on the show, right? Yep, exactly. <laughs> awesome. Um, so, as you've been, you know, we we talked a little bit about um, about your playtesting process uh, in the pre-show and stuff like that. So, how um, I, I'd love to hear like one or two of your favorite stories from playtesting for Interceptor, whether for the base game or for this, um, something that really like resonated with you that might draw um, new gamers into this game. Well, I'll leave that one to you, Ross. You you and Dan got a lot more playtesting <laughs> than I did. Um, so while Todd was toiling away, finalizing the rules, Dan, who uh, resides in Melbourne, Australia, and I, did the bulk of the playtesting. And we set up uh, on Discord a video call where he had a camera looking down over the playing area and uh, miniatures on the table. And we would play the game. Um, and uh, I don't know, the best stories revolve around whose dice were hot or not. Um, and I think there was two or three games in a row where my dice were not hot. And I was just crushed. Uh, we would play four against four fighters. And um, I know I'd be lucky to have one make it off the board safely. The other three blown to smithereens. Um, but, you know, cold dice turn hot. And uh, I was able to return the favor. Um, and I guess most importantly, we saw the, uh, uh, the qualities of certain of the fighters. And um, my favorite, I, I always played the Terran Commonwealth, Dan always played the Calistonian Empire. <laughs> and, uh, you know, my favorite fighter, of course, is the Bolt, which is the fastest, most maneuverable. And Dan's, I guess, is, I think like the Phoenix, which is has a very high shields. Um, and depending on how the rest of the battle goes, you could always count on my bolt being behind Dan's Phoenix, trying to get through the shields. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, it it generated, the, you know, the, the statements I made earlier that the game is bloody. And, you know, we do, we were able to get through uh, four against four in an hour, hour plus. And um, unless your dice are really bad, or really good uh there's no you know it, it's very rare that you will survive with all four fighters intact i think in a four against four uh, wow so uh you know it's don't want to say beer and pretzels but certainly lends itself to that and uh you know the use of the maneuver template to plan your move and decide you know how many dice you're going to roll to try and get to where you really want to be that perfect shot and did I see on the Kickstarter it's a D10 system? Correct. Okay. So the game is basically creating dice pools to achieve any given thing, whether it's uh, attempting a maneuver, pushing the power plant, taking the shot, defending against the shot. Um, and uh, target number is seven and maximum of 10 dice rolled. And if you, the calculation says you need to roll more dice than that target number drops. So, uh, yes, yeah, so always have a nice handful of dice to throw. And, uh, you know, we were able to, on the Interceptor Kickstarter, 
get the, the, the custom dice so that it's immediately apparent how many uh, successes you have. Oh, cool. Awesome. I was, I was just going to ask about that as a, a dice goblin, uh, if there are specialized dice just for this game. I, I know there were dice in the box, but if they were special to Interceptor, and it sounds like that's the case. They are. Yes, indeed. Cool. Uh, now, very you know important strategic question about these play tests. Uh, who had to play in the middle of the night, you or uh, our Melbourne friend? Well, I live on the, the West Coast, so my early afternoon is his early morning. Oh, so, wow. <laughs> so my Saturday afternoon was his Sunday morning, so, and Dan didn't seem to mind getting up at 7 o'clock on a Sunday morning to uh, to do our play tests. So that's usually what the time how it timed out. That's commitment is the 7 a.m. Uh, uh, gaming, although I can't think of a better reason to get up at 7 a.m. So <laughs> there you go. Absolutely. Excellent. Um, well, you guys are super uh, fast answers on everything. So uh, can I pick your brain a little bit about um, other FASA projects? We we talked a little bit about um, like what's going on with, with 1879. Um, after uh, this current Kickstarter campaign uh, closes, uh, we hope to run a an Earth Dawn campaign, and after that will be 1879's turn. Uh, next projects for 1879 are the Swords Source Book and the Maps of London project. Cool. So, uh, Swords Source Book is uh, second source book in the Grove in 1879. So we're continuing to allow the players to explore the uh, the new world through the portal, which is the basis of 1879. Um, and the Maps of London is uh, basically an A to Z for uh, 1879 London. Cool. It will have a uh, uh, 12 by 18 inch sheet of map sheet for each of the 30 boroughs of London, um, as well as uh, charts showing travel times between the various boroughs and uh, overall uh, map so that if you don't know where any particular place is, you can find it on the overall maps. Um, and cool. we hope to have this in a nice, fancy magnetic lockbox. And uh, it should, it's a really sharp project. And, you know, all the maps are printed in color. And uh, yeah, 30 maps for the 30 different boroughs. That sounds uh, awesome. Like, that's a great collection. And and we're hoping that uh, not just 1879 fans will be uh, interested in such a uh, a role playing aid, shall we say? Yeah, yeah. You want 30 maps uh, set in London? Here, uh, you know. If if you just happen to be interested in steampunk stuff, uh, this will uh, uh, be a must have, shall we say? Awesome. That's really cool. Now, uh, so so we've got so far this year, we've got Interceptor, we've got the plan for the next uh, faction is the, the right word for Interceptor. We've got the 1879 Kickstarter, and we've got what's coming for Earth Dawn. And 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 then and then there's Earth Dawn. Um, <laughs> so after uh, Interceptor closes our current Kickstarter campaign, as soon as Kickstarter will let us, we will run uh, the next Earth Dawn campaign, which will be uh, Magic Deeper Secrets which is basically uh, a book that contains every single spell in Earth Dawn, as well as support material. Um, alongside that, we will also introduce a deck of uh, spell cards. And it just so happens there are 630 spells in Earth Dawn. So that's not a small deck. Um, wow. And... Uh, Assuming we can get everything uh, done in time, uh, we may have a companion for Mountain Shadow to uh, be offered at the same time. And all of that is coming in Q1 and Q2 because you're planning on bringing these items you said to Gen Con, correct? Correct. These, these, the this current uh, Kickstarter, the Earth on Kickstarter, and the 1879 Kickstarter, those products, if everything goes according to plan and shipping from overseas works as promised, uh, all those products will be available at Gen Con this summer, this coming wow. summer. Wow. 
And then you mentioned that after Gen Con, that's when the next uh, interceptor would happen. It, would Le Leviathan be this year as well? Um, well we hope that uh, the next two factions of interceptor will be towards the end of uh, the second quarter. Um, okay. And Leviathan, we hope to get done before the end of next year. Wow. Uh, so that's that's a whole bunch of Kickstarters happening this year. Is this an exceptionally busy year for FAFSA, or is this kind of standard in terms of what you've been putting out recently? Um, it's been a, a goal to have regular product releases. You need regular product releases to keep, uh, you know, the more casual fans interested in your game systems. Um, and the new products also generates interest in old products. So in order for us to succeed as a company, we have to release as many products as we can. And we've been working over the last several years, uh, COVID aside, to build uh, the development team so that we can pull this off. That's really cool. Congratulations on all of the work that you're putting in because it's, uh, for as, as a company that runs Kickstarters, it is an ambitious goal. Uh, and I give you all the props and credit for for pulling this together and pulling it off. Uh, so that's 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 amazing that you have what you have on the docket this year. Um, what are you going to be doing? What con circuits are you going to do this year for you said Gen Con already? Um, where else are you going to be and what are you doing uh, to? Are, are there going to be games of Interceptor and Earth Dawn and 1879? Like, how can people come play with FASA? Um, well, the easiest and quickest way to, to play with FASA is going to be FredoniaCon. Uh, it's our online convention, third year running. Uh, this will be held February 17th through 19th. And we will have a slate of online games there from each of our game lines. Um, we're always looking for uh, dedicated fans to uh, demo games. Uh, at any of their local conventions and any, at any convention that they would choose to attend. Um, and you can contact us to uh, uh, learn more about that and you know see what we can do for you to uh, entice you to run our games at your shows. Um, we will probably have, as I mentioned earlier, I don't remember if I mentioned it uh, while we were live, um, all of the FASA team have full-time jobs in addition to everything that they do for FASA. So it's hard for us to, uh, you know, go to a convention every week and um, which some people do. Um, so we may or may not have people at Origins. We will be at Gen Con in force. And we have a lot of folks in uh, New England and they make a point to go to a lot of the uh, regional shows, local shows in Maine and Vermont, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, that kind of thing. Great. Uh, that, that's super. Awesome. Um, so there are tons of ways for um, new players to get involved, play, uh, for experienced players to help run things. Um, and then where do where do, does our, our audience uh, go to follow each of you and learn more about what FASA is working on and what's coming next? Um, probably the best place these days is our Discord channels. Um, we've got, uh, you know, channels for each of our game lines. Uh, we've got super dedicated fans that uh, are chatting every day <laughs> and are eager to answer any questions that any newcomers or uh, returning players might want to know. And uh, we usually keep an eye on those things. So if, if there's something that uh, that we can supply the better answer to, we will jump in and. Uh, educate everybody as to what's going on. Um, Super. So Discord channels, FredoniaCon, uh, most of our, let's say, how often blog posts appear on our website from our line developers is a variable, depending on <laughs> what else they're working on. But that's also a great source to uh, learn about what's new and what's happening and what's on each line developer's uh, mind at any given time as they produce their blog posts. Cool. Yeah, no comment on the blog posts, but uh, we, a lot of us are also on Facebook as well. There's a FASA Games uh, page on Facebook as well as for, for EtherStream, and, uh, and, and most of us developers are on there as well Excellent. in varying <laughs> capacities. 
uh, and we'll make sure that that a lot of those links get drop in, dropped into the chat as well. Um, but as we're getting close to the, the top of the hour, is there anything else about yourselves, about FASA, about Interceptor, anything you'd like to share with our audience? Todd? Um, one one shout out I would like to give is um, is Dan, our other developer on uh, Interceptor it, on Facebook, um, posts a lot of his paintings. He's a very good miniatures painter. So if you find uh, find him on Facebook through our, our Facet Games or find that Etherstream page or, or even the Demon World page, um, you, you'll see a lot of his painting uh, miniatures painting work on there. And 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 as Todd just said, alluded to, Demon World is our forgotten line at the moment. Um, and Dan is the line developer for Demon World. Um, unfortunately, Dan just, fortunately or unfortunately, depending on your point of view, Dan just got a, uh, uh, a new real life job that's eaten up a lot of his time right now. So Demon World has been uh, progressing uh, a little slower than all of us would like. But uh, again, FASAGames.com is a place to find the latest information on uh, each of our lines and Discord for uh, the communities that are the easiest available communities of folks who were uh, perfectly willing to answer any question that you may have. That's awesome. Uh, I can't wait to read more about uh, Demon World because uh, it just sounds interesting, like a world of demons. Let's go talk about it. I can't wait. <laughs> But thank you both for joining me and thank you for all that you have done for years for FASA, for the gaming community and um, to make this this hobby as fun as it is. So thank you both for joining me um, and stay tuned, uh, Run PCs, because we're going to be right back. This week on Roll with Rem Alternus, the runners have successfully broken into the club Underground 93. Still, they find themselves at a disadvantage when negotiating with their target as he has proven more powerful than they anticipated and he has a request of his own. Join us for part two of It's All About the Music and the next episode of Shadowrun Sixth World Emerald Glitch coming up next here on Gen Con TV. Don't forget that we have a wonderful giveaway of an Interceptor core box set. Thank you so much, Ross, Todd, and FASA for donating such a cool prize. Don't forget to get bonus entries and impact the game by donating bits and subs in chat. And don't forget to get your free entry by typing hashtag RemPC into the chat. All funds help us to pay our cast and crew and keep producing content. You can even pick up t-shirts and merch at our Etsy store at rumalternus.com slash Etsy. And did you know we have more shows like Shadowrun Emerald Glitch on our Twitch channel? We stream five to six days a week over on twitch.tv slash Master of Rem, including the Dresden Files RPG, Shadowrun 5th Edition, Steampunk Fantasy D&D, and more. So check it out and give us a follow. Thank you all for joining, and we will see you next week. Bye, Rem PCs.